Hello everyone. Welcome back to the sessions on DBMS. Today we are going to learn about concurrent executions. Now when I talk about transaction in DBMS, I am speaking about a series of actions. Actions that can be read or write of database objects. When I said database object, it may be A. So I am reading value of A from the database. Then maybe I will make certain manipulations, uh, modifications into that. Then I will write that. Maybe I will read or update the database object B like this. It can be a series of read and writes on the database object. But each transaction actually must specify as its final action a commit or an abort. Commit says it has successfully completed whereas abort says you have to terminate and undo all the actions carried out thus far because maybe there was some unintended actions or uh, maybe some power failure or system crash has happened wherein you don't want the changes to be reflected. Of course, when we learnt about acid properties, we have seen this that using one of the schemes like shadow database, we can implement this particular thing. Well, anyways, what is a schedule? A schedule is a list of actions. By actions, we mean read, write, abort and commit. A schedule is a list of actions from a set of transactions or I can put it as it's a chronological order of execution of the uh, statements or otherwise the actions or I can put it as it's a potential execution sequence. Now if you see here I call this as a transaction or a schedule S where there are two transactions T1 and T2. The actions in the transaction T1 is read and write of database object A and also read and write of database object B whereas transaction T2 performs read and write on database object P. If you observe here in this particular transaction there is no commit or abort. Now whenever a schedule that contains both commit I mean I either commit or uh, abort it is called as a complete schedule. Now schedule can be of two types a serial schedule or a concurrent schedule. In a serial schedule transactions will be executed one after the other in a sequential order. Remember even the actions of different transactions are not interleaved or we say not overlapped. Whereas a concurrent schedule the actions of different transactions are interleaved to improve performance. Let's, let's try to see an example for serial and concurrent. Now maybe I have got some train ticket booking. Okay, Train ticket booking as the example will take. What we used to do in the earlier time was or otherwise even now you go to the ticket counter and you maintain a queue there, right? When after the first person is served, then the second person gets its chance, then the third person like this one by one will be served sequentially. So if you see this, there can be consistency. I can assure that it will be executed in a systematic way one after the other. But the drawback would be the waiting time. The waiting time till the earlier transactions or till the first person completes his transaction, second person has to keep waiting and till then the third person will wait. It's basically waiting time because of which the throughput will reduce, performance will reduce because most of the time goes in waiting. You have seen this concept in operating system also because of which we introduced parallel execution. Parallel or concurrent execution says you can perform two actions or two non-conflicting actions simultaneously. For example, when I talk about booking the ticket online, when I say I am booking the ticket online, more than one person can execute at the same time. 
but it is basically going to be interleaved. What do I achieve by this? Let us try to see. A concurrent execution refers to simultaneous execution of more than one transaction. So, especially when I talk about a multi user system, this particular concept of concurrent parallel or simultaneous execution is very, very useful. Where more than one user or many users or applications might be accessing or modifying the database at the same time. Now, what is the advantage of this? The first advantage that I can talk about is throughput. Throughput is number of actions or number of transactions completed per given time or for unit time. So, because multiple transaction can be in progress at the same time, throughput has been increased. Automatically, it leads to maximized processor utilization. When one particular thing is performing certain input output operation, the other one can go ahead with utilizing the processor and maybe performing the calculations. I have read A, I can modify A, meanwhile another data object B can be reading, in another transaction B can be reading and A can update its data object. Because of concurrent or simultaneous execution, the waiting time of the transactions or the processes reduce because of which there will be improved response time also. The transactions get faster because they can be executed in parallel. The waiting time is reduced or response is quicker. Now, whenever you have something good, a bad is always associated with it. So, what are the potential problems with concurrent execution? When I talk about it, we highlight three types of problems. One is called as your write write conflict, or otherwise, we call it as lost update problem. The second one is a dirty read. Write and read, write read conflict, which we call it as dirty read. We will see all of them one by one, and one more is unrepeatable data or inconsistent repeat. Let us try to see. What is a lost update? Here, when I talk about the, this particular problem, it occurs when two or more transactions modify the same data, resulting in the update being overwritten or lost by another transaction. When I say I allow simultaneous access to the database object by more than one transaction, it may so happen that one of them has read the data okay, and it is in a process of modifying that data. Say I wanted the value of A was 100 earlier. The transaction T1 has that read that value 100 and it is actually modifying. It is adding 50 to that. A value becomes 150 and this is happening in the ALU. The database is not modified yet. At the same time, transaction T2 has read the value of A. Now, what is this value? This is still 100 because the modifications here is not been updated to the database. Now, A performs an action wherein it is adding 10, 100 to it. So, 100 plus 100, it becomes 200. Now, what we see is here, meanwhile, due to interleaved execution, transaction T1 is writing or updating the database with the A value. What is this value? It is 150. After it has completed, here we see that transaction T2 is writing or updating the value of A which is 200. Now, what do we see? This has, this particular action has overwritten this value. So, this value 150 is lost. So, it is called as lost update or otherwise write write conflict. Both the transactions are writing the value A one after the other wherein the last transaction or last write only persists, previous write will be lost or it will be overwritten. So, T1's updates are lost. Look at the uncommitted data problem. 
this is also called as dirty read problem wherein a dirty read is when one transaction updates an item in the database but due to some reasons the transaction fails and the data gets rolled back at a later stage but after this updation and before the roll back the database is accessed and that particular item is accessed by another transaction so there is a read write conflict and inconsistent data now let's see how this happens when i talk about a set or a schedule s in which there are two transactions t1 and t2 i see that transaction t1 reads the value of a let me assume it is 100 then a is being updated it is 150 which is also written to the database though it is temporary now what happens transaction t2 is reading the value the value it reads for a would be 150 it adds to 100 to it it becomes 250 and this writes that 250 into the database writes that 250 into the database meanwhile what happens is this rolls back meanwhile the transaction t1 rolls back when transaction t1 rolls back a's value will be normal back at 100 as per that but what we are doing here is a commit now t2 has a dirty value that was never committed in t1 and doesn't actually exist in the database at all t2 has read 150 whereas 150 is not there in the database at all it was 100 supposed to be 100 now because of this only we call it as dirty read or uncommitted data because it read an uncommitted data this value is meaningless so this is another write read problem or conflict now coming to another problem of inconsistent retrieval this is when a same database object is read multiple times by a transaction meanwhile what is happening is it has modified now look at this case here transaction t1 reads a value of a maybe it was 100 while transaction t2 also reads a value of a which is 100 it updates it as 200 and makes the modification and writes it as 200 so in the database the value of a now is 200 meanwhile due to some reason transaction t1 is reading the value of a again which is going to be 200 now if you observe here in the same transaction once the value of a is 100 another time the value of a is 200 so this is what is called as inconsistent retrieval problem that occurs when in a transaction two different values are read for the same database item remember when a single transaction reads the same row multiple times and observes the different values each time this is because another concurrent transaction has modified the row between the two rows look at this this has modified so within the same transaction t1 has read two different values of the same data this is called as inconsistency with inconsistent retrieval or unrepeatable reads remember this kind of problem has got multiple solutions the concurrency control techniques are like we have locking mechanism whenever common data is modified by two transactions we try to lock them or time stamp method or optimistic concurrency control or serializability check so in our next lecture let us discuss about serializability as a solution to concurrent exit